All right, guys, so happy Memorial Day. Um, this is a day that, you know, we all should take the time to remember those who have uh, sacrificed uh, for our country, for our freedoms. And um, I think it's important to recognize that, okay? And, um, you know, just one of those things that, you know, we should all keep in mind, you know, during this long weekend, like uh, Kamala Harris uh, stated. So, uh, today, uh, it looks like it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse for Black Lives Matter. Okay, you guys remember um, a couple days ago, the founder of Black Lives Matter Global Network, uh, Patrice Cullors, had resigned. Okay, um, she's stepping down amid, amidst all the controversy going on with her and the group. And which, you know, there's speculation that, <clears throat> you know, um, she could be using some of the money uh, and funnel them to groups that are related to our family members and things of that nature. Um, there's questions about what the organization is actually doing with the money. The chapters say they're not receiving any of the money. Okay, there's questions about what she's doing, like how she's getting her funds, right? In terms of, you know, the expensive real estate purchases that she's getting and all that stuff. Even though, you know, she says she's a trained Marxist, right? But it seems like she's living like a capitalist. Okay, so amidst all this uh attention she resigned and it gets worse because there's a founder of black lives matter in saint paul that has come out and told his story about how he learned the ugly truth about black lives matter as an insider and uh his name is mr richard turner now again he was the founder of the black lives matter chapter in saint paul minnesota and he released a video along with uh take charge minnesota basically telling his story about the ugly truth of black lives matter i was born in minneapolis in 1985 we called the north side home at that time 18th and queen when i was two years old my father was shot and killed my mother wasn't able to take care of me so i was raised by my grandparents they told me that if I was going to change my life for the better, education was the answer. So I worked hard in school. I got into Hamlin University and earned a college degree, first in my family. Then I went on to earn a master's in education from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. I am living proof that no matter your start in life, quality education is a pathway to success. I want the same success for our children in our communities. That's why in 2015, I was a founder of Black Lives Matter in St. Paul. I believe the organization stood for exactly what the name implies. Black lives do matter. However, after a year on the inside, I learned they had little concern for rebuilding black families. And they cared even less about improving the quality of education for students in Minneapolis. That was made clear when they publicly denounced charter schools alongside the teachers union. I was an insider in Black Lives Matter and I learned the ugly truth. The moratorium on charter schools does not support rebuilding the black family, but it does create barriers to a better education for black children. I resigned from Black Lives Matter after a year and a half, but I didn't quit working to improve black lives and access to a great education. Today, I serve as the president and executive director of Minnesota Parent Union. We're dedicated to helping parents move their children from failing schools to successful schools. It's hard work, and we're up against forces that don't want us to succeed. But success is possible. Just look at me and the hundreds of children and families we've helped to pursue a great education, break the chains of poverty, and lead a life of success. As you can see there, his main beef with Black Lives Matter is, is the fact that he realized that they were not really interested in helping black people, okay? They weren't interested in actually helping the black community. And what led him to this realization is um, the fact that they were against charter schools, okay? And that, you know, they're in bed with teachers unions. And, you know, as we all know, teachers unions have been toxic to public education. They really have. And if you guys haven't uh, checked out this book yet, I actually got it. Uh, the Charter Schools and the Enemies by Thomas Sowell. Really good book on charter schools. And uh, basically, it just outlines uh, Thomas Sowell's argument for how uh, 
charter schools are superior to public schools and how we need reform in our education system um, and how charter schools can play a key role in closing the achievement gap between black and white students. Now, he lays out a ton of uh, facts and statistics about the performance of students in charter schools versus public schools. Uh, he examines this high school uh, in New York, Dunbar, Dunbar High School, that he uh, sees as a very successful model, right? And uh, he, he just makes an argument about the superiority of charter schools and how they're needed. And this is something that conservatives have talked about and pushed for a lot. And to, and to a certain extent, what this guy is talking about kind of reminds me a little bit of the King Randall situation in which, you know, I did a video about him. That school, he's trying to build his own private school, right, for young boys that have been incarcerated or in the juvenile detention center to try to help them out, teach them how to be men. And you have the public school system stopping him from doing it because they don't want to compete. OK. And again, it's just another example of how toxic the public school system can be and government interference in helping black people. Right. And in regards to this guy's story, I think it's really good to see somebody that not only was in the organization, but an actual founder come out and tell the truth about it. Right. But here's the thing. People on the right already knew this for a long, long, long time. We already knew this. We already knew that when BLM said that they wanted to take down the nuclear family structure, that they were against the nuclear family structure, that they were not in favor of trying to help the black community. OK, when you take the father out of the home or when you don't have men playing a key role in a movement like Black Lives Matter, of course, it's not going to be beneficial. OK, to black families, to the black community. Everything starts with the family. OK, that, that's where it starts. And if you're not focused on the family, you're not focused on creating strong families. Obviously, you're not focused on helping anybody. OK, and then when you also and then on top of that, they want to promote all these other toxic ideologies and push them on black people. While at the same time, like this guy said, trying to support, you know, the teachers unions and, and public schools and stuff like that, instead of going with a better model and, you know, basically funding students and not systems. OK, that's the problem. Our systems are corrupt, inefficient and mismanaged. And the teachers union, in my opinion, is getting in the way of trying to fix that issue because, Ultimately, the teachers unions exist to protect current teachers, OK, to protect their jobs. Right. So what that does is, is that it makes it so they're incentivized to have as little competition as possible in order to protect their interest. And ultimately, that's not good for the student. That's not good for the student. It, it is funny to me because as much as these leftists want to talk about systemic racism, as much as they want to talk about, um, you know, black people having a disadvantage. They never talk about the teachers unions, right? I mean, just this pandemic, we've all seen how the teachers unions, because they bought and sold the Biden administration, they basically have pushed for schools to stay closed. OK, they push for schools to stay closed. And who is this hurt the most? It has hurt those who have to work and can't necessarily afford child care. OK, in order to take care of their child during the day. And those students who need extra help, who need in-person specialized, uh, you know, teaching, okay, and tutoring, okay, it, it's hurt those students the most, right? Some of these students, you know, online learning is not enough. They just can't get it. They, they need more attention. And by these teachers unions keeping these schools closed, again, what it does is it makes it harder for those parents to work. It makes it harder for those parents to have a job because now they have to worry about, OK, who's going to take care of my child? Now they have to go pay for daycare. Now they have to work less. Now they have to change their schedules. That is affecting those who are lower income more than anybody else. But I have not heard one peep from the so-called woke revolutionaries on the left about how teachers unions literally during this pandemic have disproportionately negatively affected people of lower income statuses. You never heard that. That, that's an immediate policy thing that the Biden administration could have done a better job on. And nobody on the left pushed him on opening back up schools. It had to be people on the right that was pushing for that. And ironically, the people on the right who are pushing pushing for that are the ones that's always called racist and bigots when it's like, well, no, they're pushing for a policy that's actually going to help black people. It's going to help those that are lower income. It's going to help those parents who 
you know, want to go back to work, right? Who really don't have the resources needed to pay for daycare or to, you know, pay for somebody to take care of that child. That's really who it hurt, right? And we heard nothing about that whatsoever from those people who claim they care about these issues so much. And that's just really just one example of how the teachers unions are so toxic to this country and how it's become apparent that they really run the education system, okay? Um, they run the education system, right? And, and what that leads to, it leads to a lower quality of education, right? Because, I mean, there's nobody really pushing these teachers to be better, right? Okay, because they're protected by the union. And ultimately, I think that these uh, teachers unions are blocking competition or at least trying to block competition uh, in this country. And I think that's bad for America's uh, education system. Okay, um, I think that's definitely something that, that needs to be done about that. But, you know, kudos to this guy for coming out and um, exposing BLM once again. And obviously, he's continuing his fight uh against you know these teachers unions by, by serving as president and executive director of the minnesota parent union which is basically dedicated to getting uh children out of these failing public schools and into charter schools where you know hopefully they'll have a better quality education so you know <clears throat> it seems that he's very passionate about this and um, I'm glad that he exposed his organization for what it is and not only just expose them but continue to work to accomplish what the organization was unwilling to do and uh this organization's this movement's popularity is at a, basically a low at this point down from last year uh you got people exposing this left and right the founder left it looks like blm the organization is a uh sinking ship at this point it, it really is a sinking ship uh it's like the titanic so hey like i said i'm glad to see more of this type of stuff come out and uh let me know what you guys think Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.